Yes. What's up guys? It's gonna be another noisy one. I came back out to one of my absolute favorite spots. It's right next to a major freeway, so you're gonna hear this constantly. Really quite excited. Let's go ahead and get our bait out and get, get ready to go. Bit of sad news, I lost today my favorite knife, Smith & Wesson pocket knife that I've had for 13 years. I lost it, I spent a good hour looking for it, it's gone. But, I went ahead and bought this, so I just dropped by the store and I got ourselves a, a Kershaw. Now I am not sponsored by anything at all for any product, but I've always wanted one of these Kershaw knives. Really, really lovely. Quite excited to use that. That's a good looking knife. Let's go ahead and use this on our bait. Let's go ahead and cut this up, get it out. That's sharp. There we go. That's exactly where I threw it the last time when we got that really big fish out of here. I'm gonna put a second one out just right in front of us, just in case there's a Agara cruising up in this little shallows here. This is my lighter outfit, my secondary outfit. I'm just gonna toss it right in there. Boom. Just in case there's someone that came back in this way. By someone, I mean a big fish. So much blood. This carp is fresh. I caught it like an hour ago. Which is excellent for what we're doing. Makes things very messy though. There we go. Anytime you're fishing a convergence of a bigger stretch of water and a creek that connects to it, always good to put at least one bait in the creek. All right, there's a rod, there's a rod. In the meantime, I'm just gonna amuse myself with a micro light setup, just play around, maybe pull a bass out of these rocks. Just for fun. Oh, I just heard one. I just heard a I just heard a fish on top of the water out there. That's a good sign.
it's been about an hour and a half. We haven't had any bites. Lots of turtles taking our bait. So we are gonna move and go to a different spot that I think is gonna do much, much better. So let's get out of here. All right, long jump, but we made it. Let's get going over here. Oof, something running with purpose. This fish is moving off pretty fast. Fish keep letting it go. So fish grab it, they let it go. Grab it, they let it go. And I'm not one of those people anymore who sets the hook way too early. I, for a long time, when I was younger, I would let it go, I think, too long. And then I would try to set the hook too quick. And now I'm trying to strike a balance here. I'm trying to find where I think he is. Because I've already had several fish pick up the bait and drop it, I'm gonna to try to set the hook on this fish. If he drops it, it'll be the same result we've been getting, but at least I'll have, have tried to connect to him. So here we go. Oh, we're on, we're on. Feels catfishy. Feels catfishy. Coming at us. Let's see what we got here. It's not too big, whatever it is. Okay, there's the float. And we got, what is that, a catfish? Yep. It's a good one, though. That's a really nice fish to have. Yes, sir, I'll take that. Corner hook, too. That's always nice. It's one of the things about using these really big baits for catfish is they take the whole thing in their mouth, but if you put your hook near the end, they still get corner hooked. There we go. That's a nice little first fish of the day. Nice little blue catfish. Not a monster by any stretch, but fun to have. Good fish, let's get him back. I'm just kinda... That was fun. They seem to prefer the baits on floats out here. You know, they, they'll pick stuff up off the bottom, but I've had a lot of success recently uh, float fishing with these catfish, so let's do it again. There we go. I gotta say, I'm loving this knife. I uh, have a thing for knives, guys. I really love a good knife. Is that a boat coming? No. Thought I heard a boat coming. And there are boats that'll come up in this way, you know, guys working on different projects in this area of the bayou. And the occasional angler. The angler, the occasional angler I don't mind as much. It's the, you know, the guys that are in here doing their jobs, which ironically, you know, can't blame them, they're doing their job. But because they're doing their job, they've got to go from A to B. They can't slow down every time someone's on the bank fishing. So they just kind of whip on by. Of course, saltwater fishing is exactly the opposite. It's the recreational boaters that I absolutely can't stand. I can't tell you how many, you know, 100 yard plus stretches of line and 20, $30 shark rigs I've lost to people on jet skis just going too fast in the shallows. That is not fun when that happens. But anyway, getting off track try to show you guys my leader in just a minute just really want to get the bait back out there now that the uh the bite is hot look at that blood 
So much blood. Just dry it off on some of these leaves. And by the way, I notice whenever I do something like this, a lot of people are like, oh, that's poison ivy, that's poison oak. You're next to this and that. Miraculously, somehow, I am not allergic to pretty much anything. Now, I know that can change with time and exposure, but just FYI, as luck would have it, I, I am absolutely not the least bit allergic to a wide variety of, uh, of those types of plants. All right, we're on again. The takedown happened in a pretty much the same spot. Just gonna give it a minute. Could be a gar, could be a catfish. It's moving pretty fast. It's still going. This wind makes it hard because as the fish is moving out this way, I'm sorry, as the fish is moving out straight, the wind is blowing across, putting even more pressure on the line. Let's go ahead and get ready to set this. I don't see the float yet, he's still on. Fish on, better fish. This is a better one. Still don't know what he is yet. He's trying to hide under these branches. If I had to guess, I'd say it's another catfish. He's just, uh, oof, almost broke us off. Oh, he got away. Damn, got away. He, uh, he did, he didn't break us off, but he did use the branch to his advantage. It ran uh, the line over one of those branches and just for a moment, I lost contact with the fish. And uh, that was all it needed. Dang. Well, that makes me think it was a gar. Let's get this right back out there. Typically, if you can get a good hook set on a catfish, and this is not always true, I'm talking about the, the, the size of the catfish you just saw me catch. You know, I don't catch 70 pound flatheads like a lot of, like some of the YouTubers do in Ohio and some of those other states. The catfish that I catch typically, you know, once you, once you get a good hook set on them, they're going to be hooked. Doesn't matter if you lose contact for a second, the hook is generally still there. With Gar though, you lose them for a moment and they're gone. All right, we're gonna try this again. Let him, oh, did he feel it and let it go? <sighs> okay, he's coming towards us. What do we got? What do we got? There's the float. I think it's a catfish. Oh, it's a good one. I think that's a slightly better one. At the very least, he's very dark. Cool colors on him. That is an absolutely gorgeous fish. Lots of scars, look at his mouth. You guys can see that scar next to my thumb there. Clearly he's been hooked before. Let's get him back real quick. What a cool looking animal. So beautiful. Let's just gently slide him back in. Oh, there he goes. Okay, he's fine. It's interesting, he had a split jawline probably from being uh, you know, hooked in the past, maybe hung up on a trot line for a while, maybe somebody hooked him and he broke free. 
It's a fighter. That's why I like catfish. They're so adaptable. They're so tough. Anyway, he's back. Let's get another bait out there on a float. That seems to be doing the trick. The float is outfishing the bottom rig easily. Real quick, now that we've got a few fish under our belt for the day, let me show you the rig I'm using. So this is the Penfierce 2. It's a size 6,000. I don't think they make these anymore. They've moved up to the 3. Fishing it on the Ugly Stick Tiger. This is a 7 foot rod. There's the stats for you. Excellent catfish rod. Real good soft action to it. You guys can see I'm using 50 pound braid. Big FG knot down to 50 pound mono. And on the business end guys, our mono goes through. Just a, a non-weighted cork. Big 180 pound swivel. I use those for uh, small sharks as well. 135 pound coated wire. That's a bit overkill, but you know, when you're shopping on a budget, I like to get some wire that I can use for uh, gar as well as small sharks. So 135 pound coated wire from American Fishing. Uh, it's American Fishing wire. Does the trick really well. This comes down for about two and a half feet to my hook, which is a, uh, I believe that is an owner live bait hook. It's either owner or gamakatsu. You guys can see it's got that little ring there. I love that. Uh, for this type of fishing gives the bait a lot of uh, movement in the current. And you guys can see uh, double sleeve crimps. And it's a very small hook. It's size one. Um, I find that they are very easy to remove. Even when catfish try to take them deep, I don't have a lot of trouble getting these out of the fish. Oh my God, something. Oh my God. Oh, that's a good fish. That is the fastest, hardest, most dominant run we've had all day. Holy smokes, it is just booking it. I hope it's that big fish, I'm not gonna lie. I'm really glad, I'm really glad he's running on this rod, not the other one. The other one is, uh, I think, equipped to handle good fish, but not if it's what I think this is, not like this. I know this is stupid, but I have to get this out of the way or we're gonna end up getting tangled and losing it. Okay, that had to be done. And we're back. Man, nothing has run like this was running today. I've missed a couple of good gar. I don't want to miss this one. This one I think is a big one. Still going. Oh my God, if that was him, did you guys see that fish come up out there? If that was him, he's massive. Regardless, we got some big fish rolling. We got some big fish rolling out here, guys. Just check behind me, make sure, yeah, the rope is still there. Oh yeah, there's another big gar over there. Man, they're starting to move in. I, You know what? I might actually just kind of downgrade to one rod. It would just be a waste to have uh, more than one big fish take a rod at the same time. I just end up losing two fish instead of catching one. More rods is not always more fish. Not when you're alone. Oh my God, he is just taking off. Look at him go. Holy smokes. This has got to be a hundred pound fish. You know what? He can have as much line as he wants. I haven't seen that float come back up yet. Is he still going? I think he stopped. He's still on it, but he stopped. He stopped running, which means I hope he is about to uh, swallow that bait. This is where I'm starting to seem to look down here to see exactly where I want to be to lasso him. This uh, big, what is that, a six by six? It's not a four by four. It's like a six by six or an eight by eight, something massive. That is not gonna help us at all. Still running, my goodness. 
I'm really glad we got that other rod out of the water. It's probably got a hundred yards of line out there now. Time to set the hook because I'm running out of line. I can actually see the spool under that. And there's a good chance we're gonna lose the fish because it, the line got run through a plastic bag. Unreal, but let's check that drag, good and tight. All right, here we go. I'm gonna try to free it from that bag before we do anything. Fish is definitely still on though. Okay, free of the bag. Reels locked up. Damn. Do not, do not, do not buy these pen fierce reels. This is like the fourth one I've had that's just broken on me. That just cost me a hell of a fish. Shit. Well, guys, sun's getting low. Now I brought my my filming lights um, in case it gets too dark and I just have to stay out here a little bit longer. But I probably missed 10 fish, just uh, one tick after the next. The problem is these fish are running through that spillway. So they're going this way. A huge bow gets created in the line um, and then they have time to take it through the snags. And of course, if I try to tighten up the line through the current at any time, they feel it, they let it go. So challenging conditions uh, fishing from this exact spot at the moment. I've set up kind of like a, a stinger rig, basically uh, more than one hook um, at intervals. That way I don't have to wait for the fish to run quite as much. In theory, I want the fish to grab the bait and have the wire going through his mouth with the hook over here. So when I set the hook, that second hook will pull across his jaw even though he hasn't taken it into his throat okay fish just took it down there it is again okay fish still has it maybe it's hard to tell the float comes up float goes down over and over and over all right guys we finally got one Finally got one hooked, I should say. He's not landed yet. Aw, oh, damn, that's not even a gar. It's a catfish. Man, that is so frustrating. It's a fish, though. It's a good fish. I just really had my heart set on catching a gar today. Let me... Maybe next one. Smallest fish of the day, actually. But, uh, you know, not a bad fish to have. Make sure my light's not too powerful. Oh, okay, that's actually pretty good. Yeah, nice little fish. Get the styrofoam off of them. Real pretty. Back in the water. There he goes. Yeah, not at all when I'm, you know, fingers crossed fishing for. I did say more than once that I would take anything. That's anything. I think I'm gonna have a couple more throws though. I'm not, I'm not done yet, we'll see. If you look on your video play bar and there's like 30 seconds left, we ain't get anything. Um, so like, subscribe, hit the bell, go to our Patreon page. But uh, real quick, let me just re, uh, readjust this hook here. Fishing real close in. 
darker it gets, the closer these fish come. Another one. There we go. That's not a bad one. Not a monster. This is probably, you know, 90% of what's in there. There's some monsters in there, but not this guy. Let's get him back. He is a good fish, though. I think what I'm going to do, guys, is uh, I'm going to cut these uh, small hooks off and just go with a circle hook because all I'm getting is catfish. And I'm already missing the gar. Okay, let's go. Let's try to go one more fish at least. We're having a pretty good little catfish session. So I got on a uh, size 8. Gimikatsu octopus hook. Now when I tie these on normally, I snell them. But because I've got wire on here... I've done something a little bit different. I, don't, I didn't just run it through the eye of the hook. I don't know if you guys can see. There you go, you guys can see I ran it through around the shank and then back up. So kind of a snelled way to crimp your wire. I like it. light keeps falling down. There you go. You guys can see now. Wow. fish is going fast. Ooh. He's on. Good one. Fighter of the day. I don't know if he's going to be fish of the day. He's fighter of the day. All right, he just hit the surface. Yeah, fish of the day. Nice. That's a good catfish. That is the perfect way to end the day. That is a good one. Yes. All right, let's get him up. Woo! You came in the nick of time, buddy. 
And I'm really glad I put those uh, circle hook on. Oh! This is a beautiful fish. What a great way to end the day. Oh. She went from being a very long session with just a couple of fish here and there to a great session with a really nice fish to end it. Very happy with that. I'm sure if we stayed out here a lot longer, we could probably catch a bunch more this size. Uh, but uh, I've been filming all day long. I've got stuff I gotta do at home. Uh, including the editing of all the videos I shot. I shot more than one video today. Beautiful fish. Let's get him back. Back in the water. Oh, there he is. Get out of here, buddy. He got me good there. Well, that's what I get for not using the grippers, but hey. Sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. Wonderful session. Well, that'll just about do it for us today, guys. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. When you subscribe, hit the little bell. That way when I upload videos, you get the notifications straight away. Don't forget to subscribe to our other channel, Wildlife Outdoor Cooking. It's where all the catch and cooks are done, uh, as well as a whole bunch of other stuff about food either gathered or cooked outdoors. You can find the link to that on the homepage of this channel. Check out the link to our Patreon page. It's in the description of this video. You get all kinds of great benefits for becoming a patron of the channel. Uh, in addition to supporting the channel, you get all kinds of good stuff like my best fishing spots, you get uh, exclusive entry into a fun contest for really good prizes, rods, reels, knives. We're about to give away a travel rod in the next couple of days. Loads of extra videos, behind the scenes content, and uh, for whatever it's worth, direct access to me whenever you want it. If you have a question for me, hey, where'd you catch this fish? Hey, what lure are you using? Hey, you know, all this kind of stuff, you can get to me instantly. Be happy to answer any questions or talk to you whenever you want. More is coming, stay tuned, and until it's here, I will see you guys later.